Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. My name is Tyler Page. I'm a solution architect at MCA Connect. And a couple of days ago, Dual Right was announced as generally available for everyone. So I wanted to do a quick demo of what that means and what it looks like. And uh, stay tuned, we'll release some more in-depth ones um, as far as setup and things like that later. Uh, but let's start with just a general overview. So what is Dual Right? It's a new capability and enables data to become available natively on the common data service, uh, basically from your finance and operations apps. So I know we've had different um, methods of integrating the two in the past. Um, a lot of people do, um, you know, just build integration from the ground up or SSIS jobs um, or the data integrator. Um, so, but this is the first uh, stab from Microsoft um, at doing some real time uh, bi-directional integration for um, a ton of entities. So they're really trying to merge the platforms here. You'll see um, all the entities that were added to the common data service to support this integration. There's some real time calls to FNO for um, pricing on products and things like that that take into account trade agreements. So there's a lot going on here outside of just syncing data across. So why should we, we care about this or why should we use it? So basically, um, the real time aspect of this. So um, notice it's near real time. Um, there's some um, plugins and different things on both sides of the fence that are running. And so um, it's near real time in the sense of a, a save on one side is committed in both sides um, you know, at the same time. So uh, maybe not instantaneous, but it's definitely real time. It's not batch integration is the point. It's not nightly updates or hourly updates. And really what they're trying to focus on here, um, the text up there is really the point of this, is they're trying to get to a point where um, these applications, even though they are different databases, we really want it to feel um, like one product, one, one database. And so we're syncing some data across to make it um, seamless for these, these apps to work together. Um, the setup is nice. It's embedded in finance and operations. Um, it does some checks for you as you set up, make sure everything's in place. And then you select your legal entities you want to sync up and basically turn it on from there. Um, there's a ton of maps out of the box, so it'll support full prospect cache scenario. And then you can also um, add other entities or customize the ones that they, they provide out of the box as well. And then it has nice error reporting um, alerts when um, systems are down, like finance and ops. Uh, if it's down for an update, things will queue up and run later. So it's nice. Um, Air logging and things like that for us as well. All right, so let's do a brief demo. Enough slides. So I'm not going to go through the entire setup. Um, I did that um, prior to this call, and I'll do a detailed video on that later. So primarily on this call, I'm going to focus on. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the setup and just what it has to be in place, and then we'll, we'll just do a quick demo, um, updating some records. So um, as far as setup goes, there's a couple of things that you have to have in place. Uh, there are some solutions that support this. So first step, you see I'm in Power Apps. I went to Solutions. I went to the App Source and installed the Dual Write solution. So it's now available there. And you'll see um, it takes a little bit to run because it's installing um, all these Dual Write solutions to support the integration. So Finance and Operations Common, Core, some Maps, Asset Management, um, so you see all these have to be installed to support um, all this integration. So once you let those run, um, the next piece is allowing these apps to talk to each other. So CDS and your finance and operations instance really need to be able to communicate. So that's done with a couple of um, app, application, app IDs set up in both systems that talk to each other. And so that needs to be set up. Um, in finance and operations. So if we go to uh, AAD or Azure app IDs. Then you see I've created these two. And this is all in the setup step, so it walks you through. I'm just showing you quickly here. I'm going to set up these two app IDs. And then the same way in my CDS instance, let's go to settings. 
and quickly verify that the app IDs are set up there. All right, so let's go into security, users, and then change our view to application users. And you'll see the same app ID set up here for dual right integration, dual right integration. Um, when you set it up, the names don't really matter. So you can put whatever names you want in there. And then they do need security roles since they are creating updating data as part of the integration. Um, so out of the box, you can give it sysadmin, but the recommended approach going forward is you know, create just like you would any other integration um, application, you know, create a security role that get, allows it to create and update the records that you know, it needs access to. Uh, so you can just fo focus on the entities you're integrating and then give that security role to this one as well. Um, you will have errors if this these integration users right are trying to update an account, but you didn't give that security role account update access or write. So you do need a security role that allows everything that um, your integration jobs are trying to do. So for my setup, I just gave it sysadmin for now. All right, so once that's set up, then we can go into your finance and operations environment and data management. And you'll see this new dual right tile if you're on the right version. Um, again, the um, version specifics are in the, the setup guide. Um, and you can find all that there. Um, you can also set this up directly from LCS when you're spinning up a new environment. Um, since mine was already set up, it was an existing finance and operations environment to an existing CDS environment. So I set it up inside this instance itself using this dual right area here. So the first time you go in here, you won't see anything. It'll say you are not linked to an environment and you would actually go through the linking process here. And again, I'll do another video um, or webinar to show the initial setup and linking. Um, but once you link an environment and you pick the legal entity you're integrating with, one or more, then you'll notice it tells you it's synced up with this environment. And from that point on, you can apply a solution, which is the Microsoft dual right solution, which gives you all these data maps. And then once you do that, your next steps are to enable these data maps based on the different scenarios you want to integrate. So notice um, some of the documentation you might have to read to brush up on exactly what is syncing, um, what filters are in each of these jobs. But other than that, you can go through, turn them on. The nice thing about these is when you do turn them on, many of these have dependent jobs that have to run with either it's reference data or um, just different pieces that each job is updating. So when you try to turn one on, let me take one here. And if I say run, I get this nice window here. It tells me um, if there's any de dependent jobs that require this to run, then they'll be here and I can actually run, trigger them all at the same time to run. This one doesn't have any dependencies, so it's just one. And notice initial sync. So basically, if your CDS environment's blank, this is nice because I can just let my finance and operations data come over. That's what's meant by the initial sync, is to sync up the two systems. Um, and even if both systems have data, you can still sync it up. Um, one of the requirements as you go through the setup logs is the entity and CDS has to have the exact same um, alternate key set up to, so that the basically the integration knows exactly which records to update based on that integration key. So for this one, we can just turn on and say, my master's finance and operations and run it. Uh, this one should have some dependencies. That's just to show you an example. If I try to run this one, there's this little toggle that show related entity maps. So it's telling me all of this needs to be running before the ones I want to run can run. So sales order headers and lines. So most of mine are running. And from here, if I wanted to run these three, I could leave them checked for initial sync, decide which is my master. 
again, it really depends on where your, your source data is. And then I could, have, I could say run, and these would start running the initial sync process and sync up the data. And then from that point on, they would just be running for real-time updates. All right, so last bit of this. Let's just take a customer example. So mine ran, I did the initial sync. So if I look in my sales hub app, all these companies, I've got 30 or 32 customers that are part of the USMF legal entity or company now in the CDS. And you'll see several new fields, um, a ton of new entities to support this integration. And then my account numbers all match finance and operation cust customer list. So again, this is a new CDS instance, so I didn't have any customers in there. So I'll just let them all sync over from finance and operations. All right, so if we take Contoso Europe, for example. And we update some data over here. Well, we take number of employees, just as in the basic example. Let's up that from zero to 200. Go ahead and force that save. Let's find the same account over here. DE001, DE001. Number of employees is still zero. Let's see if we can refresh this. And there we go. It's now 200. So that's a very basic example, um, but notice. Near real time updates. Um, you notice the save on CE took a little longer because it is real time. There is actually plugins that check and make sure finance and operations is up and running um, do, and that the save can be committed in both systems. Otherwise, it's backed all the way out um, since it's, this is now an integrated platform. Um, also, on the finance and operations side, um, in that dual write setup is where we can set up alerts. That way, if one system's down, um, primarily finance and operations, then it allows the users to keep working in, in customer engagement and it will queue up changes. So it'll queue up that number of employees change, the address change, phone number change. And then once finance and operations is back on, maybe after an update, uh, then all those changes will just sync across. All right, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll do some more as far as um, setup and um, some more in depth, maybe a full scenario on um, the entire prospect to cash scenario. But just wanted to give you a brief video on what's available now. Thanks for tuning in.